So the Labour MP Stella Creasy said last week that a woman can be born with a penis. She added that biological sex is, is real, but also that trans uh, woman, a trans woman is an adult human female. Now, Creasy's comments provoked plenty of debate, with the, the Labour Party chair, Annalise Dodds, saying she didn't agree with her colleague. Uh, John Pike, who's a senior lecturer in philosophy at The Open University, has written about the subject, and I'm delighted to say that he joins me now. John Pike. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi. Um, now, the first thing I should say is that Stella Creasy was invited to appear so that we could have a discussion about this, because it got quite heated yeah. online, didn't yes. it? What, 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 can you talk us through what happened here? Uh, so, um, Dr Creasy gave an interview to the Daily Telegraph um, in which, amongst other things, she said that um, a female um, human could have a penis. And that's, if you like, a move on from saying uh, trans women are women and yes. so women have penises. Yes. Um, so it's less to do with identification and more to do with biological Yeah, reality. so it's, right. the, it's the term female that, that kind of, I suppose... Uh, made made me notice this because it's it's another step in the in the what I call the linguistic colonialism. Yes. Here, the taking of it one term after another. Yes. And desexing it, turning it into a subjective uh, term rather than an objective scientific term. She got quite cross with me because you um, objected to this. Uh, I was uh, blunt. Um, yes, as sure. you are on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and she said that I was talking gobbledygook. Now, that's an interesting charge, because what I said was, well, look, if you take the word female, mm. we'll have to, and turn that into a matter of gender identity, we'll have to use something like homeostatic property cluster one, or people on a development pathway to large gamete production, or something like that. Rather than male and female. Rather than male and female. It trips off the tongue, It John. does, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it, the, the, the point is that, you know, if you grab a term and turn it into an identity term, yes. then we'll still have sexed features of the world, we'll still have biological sexes, we'll still reproduce in a, in a sexual manner, and we... Um, still need terms that allow us to explain and uh, and comment on those features of the world. So you're just making it more complicated and more inaccessible and less less democratic. But, but it's quite a charge to say that you're speaking gobbledygook by, by um, you know, saying what is the scientific consensus on this issue. It, and you're simply articulating that view. But yes. also, she went a step further and said that she feared for your students. What does she mean by that? Uh, well, I mean, we, we, she's not here to answer I, that, so that's perhaps unfair. I presume she thinks I'm not very good at teaching. OK, OK. Uh, well, no, and, and it, I should say that, you know, Stella Creasy was invited. Uh, she did get in touch to say that, obviously, Sunday's a big day for street parties and events in her constituency for the Jubilee. So, of course, she wasn't available, and that's fair enough. Uh, she further said that lots of people have tried to misrepresent her views and that only she can speak for herself, and I do completely agree with that. And I have asked if she wants to appear over any of the next few shows. My invitation is open, so I'm really hoping if Stella Creasy is watching... I would really welcome the opportunity to explore these issues because I feel, mm. I do fear that this issue, people do end up mudslinging very easily. It's easy That's to fall true. into that. But it would be much better to have people with opposing views on this sitting down together and talking about it. Yes, I, I agree. And the standard thing to say is that discussion is toxic. Now, what makes the toxicity thicker and thicker, if you like, is... Uh, playing with and redefining terms so that we can't actually get at what the disagreement is about. Mm. Um, and so my, my problem with the kind of colonising of the term female is that I'm now, if, if that's successful, I'm now unable to say, you know, in my small area, which is the ethics of sport... I'm unable to give my position, which is that female sport should be for females and not pe for people with male advantage. So, you know, yes. it's wrong for trans women to compete in female sport. I need the words to be able to say that. And the word I need at the moment is female. Yes. If Stella Creasy is, if Dr Creasy is denying me that word then I think it's, it's open to her, the challenge is to her, to say, how can we have this debate? Yes. 
How can we actually and, discuss these you know, things? I mean, I, I, and I, I want to reiterate, I don't know what, what uh, Stella Creasy's intentions are here or mm. anything like that, but I, I think we can confidently say uh, that, that um, the, the kind of discourse she's drawing on there, mm. this kind of um, redefinition of terms... Mm. Uh, is is a standard trope now within the more extreme wing of trans activism, and it does sure. make it hard for people to. I mean, you come from the ethics of sport background, yeah. But to argue the case that you need single sex sports, yeah. Well, there are two things that Stella Creasy is definitely not doing. Mm. One is she is not reporting the findings of a scientific inquiry that has found some h human females with. Penises. Yes. She's not doing empirical science. This is not a discovery. Yeah. The second thing, which is her retreat position, she's not simply re uh, dis disambiguating or explaining some ambiguities in the Equality Act. And that's what she's suggested she's doing. Right. Um, because we all know that the, there's some ambiguities in the, in the Equality Act between sex and gender. But she is taking a stand. She is standing up, placing a flag... Um, being courageous, she says, and that, that can only be doing something substantial, and that is asserting that the term female is an identity word. Yes. And it and just isn't. So this, this comes down to the fundamental dispute in, in all of these debates, mm. and it really does frustrate me that people won't come and talk about this. I'm not talking about Stella Creasy, I'm talking mm. generally. Week on week, I invite people to come on, because I think for some people, the, word, the concept of being a woman or being a man, mm. these are identity categories that are uh, innate as a kind of gender, but at the same time totally yeah. shiftable. Uh, you know, it, it's quite confused. Yeah. But they're identity categories. Yeah. And then for, for most of us, they are biological categories yeah. that we have no choice over. So people are arguing with completely different definitions yeah. of the same terms, yeah. and that it means it's absolutely impossible. With regard to the Equality Act, could you clarify for us? Because my understanding is that the Equality Act uh, protects, um, is regarding sex and uh, transgender reassignment, not transgender identity. That's right. That's right. There are some ambiguities in the Equality Act when they use sex and gender as kind of interchangeable terms. Yes. Um, so, for example, the gender reassignment, um, a, a GRC gives you uh, the ability to put female yes. in law, which is which is a legal fiction. Um, but I think that's 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 a problem in the in the way that the Equality Act is yes. is worded. Um, again, I'm not a legal scholar, but uh, it's not simply what's happening is not simply a matter of picking up on those ambiguities. It is trying to change the meaning of words in ordinary discourse and debate, and that's a problem for people like me on the left, like me who support the same party that Stella Creasy supports. Because if people on the left can't name the structures of power, yes. and exploitation and oppression, we, not, we, we can't fight them. We can't get at them. And there are also real-world ramifications. I mean, you yes. will have heard about the Annex B policy at the NHS, yes. uh, where their policy is that if someone identifies as a female, they are to be uh, accommodated on a female ward. And then if, anyone com uh, if a woman on the ward complains and says they don't want to be around a male-bodied person, mm -hmm. they're to be told there are no men here. And there was even a report by Baroness Nicholson... Yeah that suggested that someone was sexually assaulted on the ward, and when the police asked the staff at the hospital, they said that's not possible because there wasn't a man on the ward. Yes. And that's to do with official NHS policy. Yes, that's right, that's right. This is not a, an obtuse matter of the philosophy of language. Yes. Well, it is, but it, yeah, but it has real-world real implications. Yes. Specifically and particularly in healthcare, but also, you know, in prisons, in my area, which is sport, and yes. so on. Uh, everywhere where sex matters, we need terms that refer specifically to biological sex. And, I suppose, and we need to defend those terms. I suppose as, some activist uh, concerns are legitimate insofar, insofar as they want compassion. They want a world in which we are compassionate yep. to people with gender dysphoria yep. who, who, who require, who need to present as the other sex or even go through medical uh, uh, surgery yes. to present as the other sex. And that, that's, that's a positive thing, isn't it? Uh, so empathy and um, adjustments in... The way in which people are treated um, seems to me absolutely straightforward. Um, and we need to negotiate those um, you know, policy by policy. But in order to do public policy and in order to work out how to deal with people in a respectful manner, you have to have words with kind of decent, simple, fixed meanings. So it seems to me if there are 
uh, single-sex um, exemptions or single-sex categories in all sorts of different areas of uh, social policy, those have to be sex yes. exemptions, not identity-feeling exemptions or gender identity exemptions.